with its flowering trees and shrubs, the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore has a location conducive to quiet contemplation and creativity, where, as Rabindranath Tagore said, tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection. The director of the IIS, Professor C. N. R. Rao, has been a birthplace for many a man of genius, many leaders in science, higher education and technology have been past students or staff members of this institute. This institute has somehow had this uncanny knack of attracting terrific talent all through these years. There are many firsts with respect to this institute. The first institute to start aeronautical engineering, the first institute to do real experiments in genetic engineering, and a number of other firsts. The main responsibility, according to me, this institute has now is to be sure that it is always at the frontiers of science and technology. That is the primary responsibility. In addition, the institute has to worry about what it can do for the immediate needs of the country. More importantly, the institute has to worry about the future of science and technology and the future associated with this country. The institute has, over the years, done research in the fields of aerospace, communications, electronics, electrical, metallurgical and chemical engineering, automation, biochemistry and biophysics, material science and solid state and structural chemistry. The institute keeps up with changing times and widens its horizons to look at present needs and future possibilities. Some of its present activities cover astronomy and astrophysics, environmental science, including theoretical, meteorological and monsoon dynamics, life sciences, including genetic engineering, developmental studies in rural technology and problems relating to energy. This institute was the precursor of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and eventually the Atomic Energy Department and India's space program. The Indian Institute of Science was established 75 years ago at the instance of Jamsedjit Tata, a visionary who believed in advanced research and education when there was little or no modern science in the country. The Institute has 1,300 students, 350 faculty members and 30 departments. Eminent scientists who began their careers here were Nobel laureate C.V. Raman, Homi Bhabha, Vikram Sarabhai, Brahm Prakash, G.N. Ramachandran, and other notable pioneers too numerous to name. At the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, Mr. J.R.D. Tata recalled the aims of the founder. He visualized if not only it, not only as a great center of scientific research and learning, but again, well ahead of his time, one which would also provide his students and research workers with the opportunities to nourish their minds with the study of philosophy, histories, archaeology, statistics, philology, and whatnot. The Vice President of India, Mr. Venkat Raman, says, It is important at the same time to ensure that the students and research scholars do not at any time lose their contact with the realities of the emerging society around them. There is almost no sphere of human activity today in which electronics do not play a vital role, ranging from outer space to industry and the home. The semiconductor complex near Chandigarh is the pioneer in the design, development and manufacture of large-scale integrated circuits. The managing director, Mr. Virendra Mohan, we are producing what is popularly known as silicon chip, where more than two or three lakh components are put on a small area 
as small as a pinhead. These components or silicon chips are used for the manufacture of watches, calculators, telephone instruments, etc. The company has a strong research and development department which will ensure that the technology in the company is contemporary and we are able to meet the needs of the consumers, particularly in the entertainment sector. <laughs> Within the last 10 years, the electronics industry has developed an astonishing degree of sophistication. The electronic circuits are first diagrammed on a large chart. They are then transferred to a computer. The computer's magnetic tapes store the design. They are always available for visual checks. There are two sets of hermetically sealed doors to ensure an ultra-clean environment. There is air conditioning to control temperature and humidity. So delicate are the instruments used that even small particles of dust can destroy the work done here. There must not be more than half a micron of dust per one cubic feet of air. A micron is equal to one hundredth the thickness of a single human hair. From a photo plate of the circuit, called a mask, many prints are taken for use during the process of manufacture. After checking for defects, the information on the mask is transferred onto a silicon wafer. It is just like getting a positive print from a negative. Each circuit has nine different levels, and there is normally a mask for each. The fabrication of wafers is a highly complex process involving delicate work. As many as 10,000 components can form a single unit as small as one's thumbnail. Silicon chips are already being used in computers for schools and colleges, and they will be used more and more. Wafers are treated for a fixed time at temperatures of up to 1,000 degrees centigrade. There are about 45 steps in the manufacture of microchips and strict quality control is required at every step. This is where the process of assembly begins. A large wafer is first marked by a diamond wheel. Then, with a little pressure, the wafer is separated into individual chips. Gold wire is bonded by an automatic machine. Now the chip is molded. Chips are branded for type and name of the company. This is the final comprehensive check. SCL chips are being used by many industries in India and are being exported to Germany and Hong Kong. The chips have revolutionized computer technology because they can retain a huge quantity of information. The miniaturization of circuits has considerably speeded up the process of information and communication. Within one generation, we have moved from what used to be called bullock cart technology to be able to say hello to tomorrow.